spoke with builders and they were very excited at the prospect of storing larger things on chain. Centralized storage providers go out of business all the time. And then the question becomes, what happens to all my data that is there? We all have had experiences of data disappearing from services that stop operating. With Walrus, we offer builders the possibility to store anything they want on chain. Storage as memory and storage as a common reference is extremely important. Walrus tolerates about a third to two thirds of nodes failing, and you're still able to continue these operations. Walrus does storage extremely well. A world that is built around Walrus, developers can be quite free to build whatever they can imagine. All right, I hope everyone can hear me. Uh, I'll be presenting Wars on behalf of the Wars engineering team. All right, before I tell you more about Wars, I want to first take you back to 2016. The place is the decentralized web summit happening in San Francisco. At the summit, the founding fathers of the internet, Tim Berners-Lee, Vince Cerf, came together to discuss their concerns about the state of the internet. They were deeply worried that the internet was becoming a collection of silos, and it is still heavily siloed today. They thought that everybody will be building their own website, but it turns out people have reservations about doing so. The internet was veering very far away from the democratic and utopia vision they had while they were first designing the World Wide Web. And they came together to make a call to build a new decentralized web. Some of the questions they asked themselves at this summit included, can the web truly be considered reliable if third parties can suddenly take down a lot of websites at any time they wish to? We trade off our privacy for free access to things on a daily basis. Is this the right trade-off for everybody involved? Is it only possible to monetize on the internet by going through third parties? And lastly, the way we write code on the internet dictates how our lives on the internet are actually lived. More than ever, it is important for this code to be transparent, auditable, and secure. At Mistin Labs, we've been answering the call to build the decentralized web. The first foundational infrastructure we build for the world is SWE. As the global coordination layer, SWE has the fastest consensus, it has the most frictionless developer experience, it has the most composability and expressiveness with primitives like objects and PDBs, and it has the best building blocks for a modern UX that you need to appeal to the masses. With a global coordination layer that is best in class, we are now ready to tackle phase two, the global data layer. The decentralized web is gonna be full of all sorts of rich media content. There's going to be long form text, audio files, video, images, data archives, and also public interest data. These things cannot be stored on a blockchain. What they need is a decentralized store that is cost-effective, performant, and programmable. Warris is going to be the home for this data in the decentralized world. So what does that mean when SWE is the coordination layer? And we often talk about this a lot, but SWE can be used to coordinate anything. In the case of Walrus, when we use it as a coordination layer, some complicated problems become very simple, and some very useful properties actually emerge. First, now you don't need to worry about having to have a custom blockchain for coordination tasks, because you can rely on SWE for that. All the global state of Walrus, all the metadata of Walrus are actually stored on SWE. And because SWE itself is very fast, that makes Walrus very fast as well. Walrus is programmable. What that means is that the proof that your data is now reliably stored, the proof that you have storage capacity that you own, these things become programmable and tokenized assets on SWE. You can integrate them with any smart contracts that is on SWE. You can also wrap them into any objects. There's also going to be a native wall token. This will be an independent token from SWE itself. This will be the Walrus Network Utility Token that will be used to steer the network economics, the incentives on the network, 
and also payments for your storage capacity. Now let's talk about Warris as its network and some of its properties. So Warris is very cost efficient. How do we achieve that? Well, in normal blockchains, every time you have a piece of data that's being stored, you have to replicate it on every validator node. That is not the case for Warris. At the labs, our research team created a novel two-dimensional encoding algorithm. Using this algorithm, no matter how many nodes you have, even if you have thousands of nodes, you're not storing this data thousands of times. You're only taking on the replication overhead about four to five X. And this is the case no matter how many nodes you have. Walrus is extremely scalable. With every new node that is added to the network, you will get proportional higher rebandwidth, you will get proportional higher write throughput. Walrus is highly resilient. You can still read from this network even if two thirds of the nodes are down. You can still write to this network even if one third of the nodes are down. Lastly, Walrus is programmable. So now you can imagine using a smart contract to manage your storage lifecycle. You can integrate and build storage marketplaces for storage capacities and trade them. You can build storage rental protocols and you can integrate them into DeFi oracles. It is a delegated stake of network. In addition to the normal delegated proof of stake mechanisms that you're used to seeing on SWE, there's also a attestation algorithm that continuously run data challenges between the storage nodes. This is also something our, re our research team designed. It is there to ensure that storage nodes are always proving that they are storing the data reliably and they will not be lost. Now I'm gonna talk about the token mechanics that is implemented by the Walrus protocol. So in a normal staking operations, the users will write data into the network, stakers will delegate stake in the form of tokens onto different storage nodes. Depending on how the stake is distrib distributed among the different storage nodes, they receive data to store in proportion to their relative stake. If the stake distribution were to change from epoch to epoch, data will be transparently migrated between nodes to balance that out. Payments. Wall token will be used to pay for storage capacities. The storage nodes are collectively set by storage nodes. Users pay for storage using wall tokens, and parts of this payment will be passed down as stake rewards to stakers. This is all very familiar, should not look all that different from SUI. Attestation is a type of new data challenges that's happening between storage nodes. This helps us, these, these data challenges are running asynchronously and continuously. And what it does is that it makes sure that even when the data is not read, we still know that the data is available and is reliably stored. If a node cannot answer to this challenge, their rewards will actually get slashed, and this provides incentives for the nodes to do a good job keeping your data. Governance, the token is also used for governance. Anytime you need to adjust parameters in the tokenomics or other aspect of the network, there will be a token governance model that you go through to make these changes. Now I'm gonna talk about the data lifecycle in Walrus a little bit as well. From the perspective of the end user, you issue very simple HTTP calls to a publisher. The publisher encodes this data and in turn, it understands how to interact with the protocol and writes this data into the network. Reads happens in a very similar way. Via HTTP, users read the data from either CDNs or cache. These components in turn talks to an aggregator which knows how to decode the data and interact with the Walrus protocol. And this is how you get your data back. Publishers, aggregators, and CDNs, and caches, they are all decentralized elements in the Walrus network. So there could be many instances of these components. Right. Walrus is now currently on DevNet. We've been running this DevNet for over four months now. At this point in time, we actually have over 12 terabytes of data stored on DevNet. This is a little bit out of date. I think this was pulled yesterday. Earlier, it became 12.3 petabytes. So the storing of data is actively happening on DevNet. There's a number of interactive demos that you could use on the DevNet. You can mint an NFT, upload a blob, look for your blob, 
And you can also use it to build your own static website with a prototype we built called Warriors Site. So the next milestone ahead of us for Warriors is the public test and launch. It will be run by 30 community operators to form 30 different storage nodes. The full tokenomics that I just described will be implemented, with the exception of the attestation and governance mechanisms, which will come a little bit later. There will be support for deletion, so you can actually get your capacity back if you're no longer using your data. There will also be usable publisher, caches, aggregators, and CDNs. So I want to take you back again to 2016. In that same summit, the fathers of the internet already made the call to ask us to imagine what are the new use cases, the new products you can build on the decentralized web. They urge us to think about creating an archive of all the software. They urge us to think about building a dot archive for a human's lifetime and beyond. And maybe this is a really good time to have a decentralized WordPress that could be an interesting product and service. Now, with the global data layer at your disposal, the possibilities are truly endless. I listed only a small number of different potential areas where you can build on walrus, but you can create an economy, become a reality. Does walrus give you AI transparency so you can store large AI models and data sets now on walrus that are verified and have good provenance? Can you build decentralized publishing in different forms? What about ransomware protection that leverages the resilience of walrus? Social good. Can we use walrus to benefit all of humanity and other ocean creatures in the world? If you're interested in learning about walrus in lots of detail, here is a link to the Walrus white paper that is now public. You can go in there and read about the operation of the network, the tokenomics, and all the future possibilities in our Walrus roadmap that could be built. Thank you very much.